I got the madness. I got cabin fever. I've got the Howdy, howdy, welcome to Hang the Critic with Josh Ball. I'm Josh Ball and this is Hang the Critic. Those who know me really well would know that Jim Henson has always been one of my heroes. He achieved so much, not only for film and television, but for the world, really. An incredible imaginative force. He's just like a uniquely brilliant person. All the stories I've heard about him have just been praised for him. He was famously the man behind the Muppets. The characters in Sesame Street, Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, the storyteller. But this video is not about him. I will do a later video about him, I'm sure. But today I want to talk about Brian Henson. Brian Henson is the son of Jim Henson. He worked on a few of his dad's projects. For example, he was the voice of Hoggle in Labyrinth. He also performed the storyteller's dog in the story. But after Jim Henson's unfortunate death in the early 90s, Brian Henson inherited the Jim Henson company. Since then, unfortunately, he has been living in his father's shadow, but he's become a brilliant filmmaker in his own right, in my opinion. The first two productions that he did was Muppet Christmas Carol and Muppet Treasure Island. This may just be nostalgia based because they were right in my generation. Like I grew up with those movies, they were my first exposure to the Muppets. They're so unique in their structure. Not only from the factor of the Muppets, but like the production design, the camera angles. These are things that come from the creative mind of a director, the man behind the helm. The, the production design of those movies is a, a brilliant meeting between sort of period accuracy and the heightened surreal world of the Muppets. Everything is a bit cartoony, right? but still it has an authentic feel. Loyalty to those novels that creates a safe place for the Muppet lunacy that was made famous in the Muppet Show to breed and go crazy. But it still has these moments where it's brought back to reality and it has genuine pathos. Spirit, show me no more. Why do you delight in torturing me? Muppet Christmas Carol is one of my favorite versions of Christmas Carol. Michael Caine, as Ebenezer Scrooge, gives a tour de force performance. Like, I think it's Oscar worthy because he acts with these puppets, but he never looks at them like they're puppets. He treats them as genuine human beings. None of the emotion of the story is diluted. Tim Curry was brilliant. Muppet Treasure Island and Kevin Bishop. Young Kevin Bishop as, as Jim Hawkins, he was brilliant as well. The classic Muppets like the Muppet movie and uh, Muppets Take Manhattan, all those movies, they're brilliant in their own way. I feel like a traitor for saying this, but they don't share the unique production value of those two movies. And none of the Muppet productions since have really met up with that. That Tom's dead! Long John shot him! Oh, but, but that Tom's always been dead. That's why he's called Dead Tom. Oh, another underrated masterpiece piece of work. He did a two-part miniseries called Jack and the Beanstalk, The Real Story. Apparently, it started life as a direct televised version of Jack and the Beanstalk that he was going to, to helm. But the more preparation he did, the more he realized that Jack and the Beanstalk is an inherently immoral story. Making a hero of a boy who invades someone else's house, steals their stuff, and kills them. That's not a good message. So what he did is, with Jim V. Hart, who also wrote the first draft of Hook, they came up with this whole unique idea of like modernizing the story and expanding it and turning it from a story about greed and murder to a story about compassion and responsibility. It's beautiful. It's Matthew Modine, Mia Sara, John Boyd, Richard Attenborough in his last performance, Daryl Hannah, James Corden. Brilliant cast. No one's heard of it. I don't know why. If you get a chance to, if you find it somewhere, grab it, watch it. It perfectly carries on the legacy of what Jim Henson was about and I love that. Surely in your world you benefit from the wrongdoings of your father, then you inherit the obligation to right the wrong. If you do not, then who shall? Brian, also as an executive producer, made one of my favorite TV shows of all time, Farscape. I love Farscape. If you haven't heard of Farscape, go find Farscape and watch it. Now, I'm not usually into space operas, like I've never gone into Star Trek or anything like that, but Farscape just drew me in. 
It's like Star Trek meets Guardians of the Galaxy meets Hitchhiker's Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's got a brilliant creative core to it. The aliens look like real aliens. They're all animatronics or prosthetics, completely out there, uniquely creative. You can relate to the characters, even some of the, you know, more villainous characters. Kill her! <laughs> then we'll have pizza and margarita shooters. Brian Henson's producing work for television does not get the credit it deserves. Dinosaurs, Gulliver's Travels, Alice in Wonderland, all those 90s miniseries that he did for Hallmark. Watch them all. Of recent times, he's been again and again trying to get Farscape back off the ground. Which I'm sort of like, and like I think it was wrapped up well. It ended with a, a miniseries that sort of wrapped up all the storylines after the actual series was cancelled. But, you know, if they continue it, yeah, I'll watch it and I'll probably enjoy it. If they don't, I'm cool with that. His most recent directorial effort was The Happy Time Murders, which I still haven't watched. And I don't really want to. I don't know if you've seen it or seen trailers for it, but I'm not a huge fan of crass humor. It's, it uses puppets and like they're jizzing and stuff like that. Yeah. But you know, that's the film he wanted to make, and that's fair enough. I hated that he got so much hate for that film from people all over the internet for going, Oh, your dad would be so ashamed of you, like, this is not the sort of stuff that he would want to make. I love Jim Henson. I would want to respect his memory. But this is not Jim Henson, this is Brian Henson. Who are these people to say what Jim Henson's opinion on his son's work would be? Surely, the greatest authority of what Jim Henson would think would be the son of Jim Henson. Someone who has actually met him and spoken to him, been in the same room with him, would have more of an authority of his opinion than random people in the comment section on Facebook or YouTube or whatever. Sorry, I got, I got heated by that. That's all we got for this episode. I hope you tune in next time. Hope you like, hope you subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Leave something in the comments, who knows. Keep watching movies and I'll see you when I see you. I don't know why, but every now and again in my life, for no reason at all, I need you, all of you. Yeah, you do? Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> 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 <laughs>